begin today on this awesome journey to Ghana. I wanted to just tell people I'm actually at ECC right now. So if you are somehow visiting maybe tomorrow, come visit me. I am going to be there. You can find some goddess work over there and I'd love to meet you, of course. I wanna meet any of you guys. So make sure to stop by. I also have finally my online store up at katiedraws.com. You can find some prints over there and stickers and all kinds of fun stuff. And my next project after Emerald City is actually a Patreon. So make sure to subscribe and follow and get notifications for that if you like mythology and art. Now back to the topic. We are going to be talking about Amokie, who is the guardian of the underworld for, it sounds like specifically women. And this is a Asante legend. The Asante people are an ethnic group of the Akan people in Ghana from Africa. Unfortunately, with Amokie, we're not able to find a lot of information about her except for one myth. So I'm gonna be telling you what that story is. A lot of you might recognize uh, some Asante myths, especially the story of the Anansi, the spider or the trickster. That's a very famous folktale that a lot of, or character that a lot of people know about. The Akan people, especially the Asante, have a lot of history behind them, and a lot of their myths were passed down orally, so I'm unsure how long Amokie has been around and if her legend is still passed down. So let's get to know her a little bit. Before we talk about the spirit of Mokie, we're gonna talk about the Asante people really quickly. So the Asante are people of South Central Ghana and most of the Asante people live in a region centered on the city of Kumasi, which was the capital of the former independent Asante state. They speak a language called Twi and they are a subgroup of the Akan peoples whom span all over Western Africa. The Asante people have a very rich culture. A lot of what we understand is based on the Asante Empire from the 18th century up to present day. Some myths and stories still linger on in the Asante culture, but they aren't as well known. We do have Christian and Muslim converts among the Asante, but the traditional religion is based on a belief in a distant supreme being. It has a pantheon of gods and lesser spirits and even these spirits of ancestors, which are incredibly important to the Asante and remains a huge base for the conception of the universe to the Asante. If you want to learn more about the Asante people, their culture, the Asante empire, check out some of my links below to get you started. Let's talk about Amokie and the Asamando. So the Asamando is the land of the dead of the Asante belief. Amokie welcomed the souls of dead women at the river that souls cross to meet Asamando. So in payment, she received from them their loincloths and beads. Asante women prepared for their burials and were dressed in loincloths and beads so they can present these to Amokie at the river crossing. There's a lot of interesting complexities to Asante burials and their beliefs on the afterlife. Some bits of this are the Asantes believe that anyone who did not die at his or her ripe age by accident or suicide became what is called a Saman Twenten, and that means a ghost who doesn't have a resting place. So this caused a result of imbalance between the seen and the unseen. Also to them, every person has parents at Asamando, and so if a person does not live go a godly life and he or she dies, the person is not received or welcomed by the parents at Asamando. So the parents are saintly and they don't condone or accept sinful souls. The ungodly people are then left stranded and outcast since they can't enter Asamando. Amokie is sometimes referred to somebody that is supposed to create obstacles from people to prevent them from getting to Asamando. It's almost like a test of some sort. Asamando literally means the land of the dead, underworld. 
This leads me to the one story that I was able to find about a Mokie, and it's an Asante legend. It describes a sad life of Kwasi Benefo, who was an Asante farmer and whose one wish is to marry and have a family. He falls in love with a beautiful woman, but she dies soon after the wedding, and this leaves Kwasi grief-stricken. His family convinces him to marry another woman, who then becomes ill and dies. Kwasi is even more heartbroken. Finally, he marries a third woman, and she is also killed in a what they call a freak accident. So Kwasi leaves his homeland and vows to live a solitary life in the wilderness. I would too, to be honest. Hermiting after all of that sounds totally logical. So he's now alone and he begins to do what he knows best, and that's farming. Over time, his land as he's farming becomes really prosperous. He wants to share all of his wealth and bounty with just somebody, which brings him back to the longing of having a family again. He finds a young woman to become his wife, but before they have a single child, the fourth woman becomes ill and dies. So Kwasi decides to abandon this farm that he's cultivated in the middle of nowhere, and he wants to, quote, die in my own village and be buried near the graves of my ancestors. So when he goes back to his family village, he comes to this realization that when his own death comes, there's not going to be anybody to mourn him. He has no children. He doesn't have anybody who's going to be there for him when he passes. He decides he wants to travel to Asamondo, and he wants to be with the spirits of his deceased wives. So what he does is he walks to the edge of the forest where women are buried. Then he ventures even further into these dense woods. He continues to walk through the night, and the forest becomes so dark that he can't see anything. It seems like many days pass, and finally he emerges on the other side of the trees to the banks of a raging river. He tries to cross, but the water's too deep and the current's way too strong. So Kwasi is about to end this journey. He's starting to realize maybe this is is not going to happen, but he really has no reason to go home. That's when he sees this old woman on the other side of the river, sitting next to a brass basket filled with beads and women's clothes. Kwasi recognizes her as a Mokie. She is a benevolent spirit who welcomes the dead to Asamondo. Once arriving at the border of the dead of the dead, newcomers must give her an article of clothing for her basket. When Kwasi sees in her basket items belonging to his lost wives, he just becomes stricken with grief even further. The old woman calls out to him and asks why this living man has come to this place. He replies that he has nothing more to live for and he wants to be with all of his wives. So the old woman basically says what's pretty obvious. She's like, well, you can't cross, you're still alive. And Kwasi decides to do what any depressed person would probably do at this point. He just sits there and he's like, I'm going to not move until I die. I'm just going to wait until my body dies and then he'll be able to proceed. So Omokie is moved by this action and kind of pities the man. And she agrees to let him enter Asamondo, but only for a brief visit. You can't stay long. She decides to still the waters and lets Kwasi cross the river, directs him to the place where he will find all of his brides. So I think that's four at this point. But here's the catch. Since they are spirits, Amokie informs him that he will not be able to see them, but he will just know that their presence is there. Once he actually arrives in Asamondo, it looks like this deserted village, and houses seem to be empty. His ears ring with the sounds of laughter and activity. He enters one of the homes and hears the voices of his wives singing a song about how kind and loving a husband Kwasi had been. So inside the house, he finds a washcloth to cleanse himself, a basket of food, and a sleeping mat. The song that these women are singing is basically a recollection of his many virtues as a great human being. 
The song changes as he decides to fall asleep, and the women begin to sing about a new life that awaits Kawasi in the village, and a life that's going to be rich, prosperous, there will be children, and a bride that will not die this time. She will spend many, many years with Kawasi. So Kawasi awakens at the edge of this dark forest again. He has an entirely different viewpoint of the world. He's very excited to go back to his village. So he goes and runs through this forest and he takes up farming again and he meets another beautiful girl and the two fall madly in love with each other. They have many beautiful children and Kwasi and his wife have many happy years together and they live to see their children's children before departing the world and going back to the final journey to Asamondo together. Now, I know that this story wasn't really focused on a Mokie, and I find that surprising because you would think that somebody who is in charge of allowing spirits to enter or depart or just remain lost and wandering and outcast as a ghost would be an incredibly important figure in a Santi religion. It's possible that her form has changed or become diminished over time. There's also an article that I found that talks about how Amokie, the word itself, is actually a giant scary person who lashes and punishes sinners who have died. So it begs the question, how important was Amokie in the past? And maybe she had two sides. One of those sides is that she's a very benevolent spirit who acts as a guide for those who have done good deeds through their life and a punisher for those that were not necessarily good people. Maybe in the future, we'll figure out more about Mokie and more about the Asante religion. Since I'm unable to identify how long ago Amokie was kind of created or maybe if she was taken from some other mythology from a long, long time ago, I tried my best to portray her the way that I thought would be okay. First of all, the thing I wanted to point out that is very specifically Asante is the clothing she's wearing, which was actually quite difficult to do. She's wearing something called Kenti cloth, and it's a really awesome uh, way that they're able to weave these amazing designs all together. And you can see more of that in some of the description down below. I did an obscene amount of research on what ancient Ghana uh, the people would have worn back in the day. And I figured that it actually seems better to use the Kanti cloth, even though it hasn't been around for more than, it seems like the 17th century. It seems like Amokie is an older deity. I'm not even sure if we can call her a goddess since she more is kind of the guardian or the guide to the underworld. If you have any more information about ancient Asante folk tales or Amokie, Please comment down below, let me know, love to hear from you. Next time we're going to be talking about a Welsh myth. This was a request from one of my friends. We're going to be talking about Caridwyn, who's kind of like the goddess of the cauldron. Uh, so I'm really excited. This is kind of my route, so I haven't done any Celtic, any Welsh mythology whatsoever. So I'm really excited to dive into that. And it sounds like there's a lot of badass women in Welsh and Celtic mythology. And I don't know why it's not as popular as Greek and Roman mythology, but whatever, we're gonna do it here on this channel. Stay tuned in two weeks. And also if you enjoy my art, go ahead and give me a follow on any of my socials, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and hopefully I will be having a Patreon up soon and I will make sure to have that down in the description below. Make sure to learn more about the Asante people and their history. Their, uh, their folk tales have spread and evolved all throughout the entire world. So check all of that out. They're really amazing. Stay tuned for next time. See you soon.